good afternoon everybody. So today I wanted for the first time to actually talk about some maths in one of these videos. So I'm going to talk about a particular example which some of you may have seen in class um, and others of you will have seen very similar examples in class. But I wanted to give a little bit more time to talk about the different processes, the different ways of thinking about a problem like this. Okay? So the particular problem that I'm going to talk about, it's an inequality and it includes absolute value. So two of the things that you've been studying already. So the problem that we want to look at is to try to solve this inequality, which is the absolute value of x minus 2 is less than the absolute value of x minus 7. Okay? So the first thing that we, we want to do is we can break this down into different parts. What is this whole thing? Well, we know this whole thing is an inequality. But each of the things to either side of the less than sign here is itself an expression. Okay? So if you ever see um, a mathematical um, object of this form, okay, or of any form, without an equal sign, without an inequality, without a less than or greater than sign, then this on its own is simply an expression. Okay? An expression doesn't necessarily tell you anything. It's simply what to do with a particular value, say here, x minus 7 absolute. Okay? What we have here is a relationship, given by the less than sign, between two expressions. Okay? And what we mean by solve this is we want to find the values of x, x is the unknown here, you know this from school, we want to find the values of x which satisfy this inequality given by a relationship between two expressions. Okay? And there's a number of ways to do this. And in general, in mathematics, you'll find that there are always many, many ways to solve the same problem. And very often, solving a problem in different ways gives you different sorts of intuition. Okay? So I want to talk about three different ways of solving a question like this. Okay? The first way is by using the properties of inequalities directly. Okay? So in the first or second lecture, you were given certain properties about inequality, certain rules that you could use to manipulate inequalities in order to take an equation like this or an equation without absolute values and to, to solve it, to find the values of x which satisfy this inequality. Okay? So we're going to go through that. The second way is by defining a piecewise function, okay? because the absolute value itself is defined as a piecewise function, okay? or the, the function given by this expression is a, a piecewise function, and so we can actually write down a piecewise function for a function related to this and this, and then solve an inequality related to those expressions. Okay? We'll go through that in a bit. And the third way is graphically, and in some sense, Graphically, this graphical way is actually the most intuitive way to understand this, but maybe not the most rigorous. Okay. So in fact, we're going to do the, the graphical method first. This is actually the wrong order for, for writing this down in, but I want to go through the graphical method first, simply to try and get a little bit of intuition as to what this expression means. At the moment, it might be a little bit confusing what this expression means. You, you've seen an absolute value and you know sort of what it means. It takes a, a number and it gives you back either the positive version of that number, if the number is positive, or if the number is negative, then it switches the sign and it gives back what the positive version of that number. So we know that an absolute value always gives back a positive number, never a negative number, but what does it mean then to talk about uh, a relation, an inequality, between absolute values? Okay, so let's do that. So we're going to start off, in fact, doing this the graphical way. So this is what we want to solve. We want to find the values of x for which this is true. But one thing that you were told in the class is that the absolute value of x, for instance, actually tells you something about the distance. Okay? So if I define a function f of x equals the absolute value of x, what this actually tells you is how far the value of x is away from the origin. So let's look at a number line. Okay, this is the real number line. which we know we can write as r, and we're going to write in the origin here. Okay? And if I give you any value of x along here, okay, so I take some particular value, let's say the value 3 here, and we ask, what is the distance between this particular value, x equals 3, and the origin? Well, the distance is 3. Okay, the distance there is 3. Okay? 
What about if we take the value x equals minus 4? Okay. Now the absolute value of minus 4, if we take f of minus 4, which is the absolute value of minus 4, this is just 4. But 4 is simply the distance between this point and the origin. Okay. So if I give you any point along the number line, the real number line, be it a positive number or a negative number, the distance from that point to the origin is always the absolute value. Okay? So if I take this point minus 7 and I give you, ask you the distance between that point, minus 7, and point 0, well the distance is the absolute value of minus 7, which is 7. Okay? So the first thing that we see is that this tells us about the distance from x to the origin. Okay. So we can now use that intuition to tell us something about this variant. So what is this function f of x? If we define some function, f of x equals x minus 2, okay, and we plug in some values of x, what does that tell us? Well, in fact, we can draw a number line again. Real numbers, okay. And we can put in the origin, but now the origin isn't actually the important thing. Okay. Let's put in the value 2 here. Okay. Now if I choose a value of x, let's say x equals 3. Okay. x equals 3. Okay. And I plug that number into this expression, into this function. What is f of 3? Well, f of 3 is the absolute value of 3 minus 2, which is the absolute value of 1, which is 1. Okay. But in fact, this is the distance from 3 to 2, which is 1. Okay. So, this expression here, this function in fact, the absolute value of x minus 2, is actually the distance from any point x to the point 2. Let's just check another one. Let's go to x equals minus 3, let's say. So what is f of minus 3? This is the absolute value of minus 3 minus 2, which is the absolute value of minus 5, which is just 5. Okay? And indeed the distance here is 5. Okay, perfect. So this gives us the distance from any point x to the point 2. Okay? Let's define a new function. g of x is the absolute value of 7 of x minus 7. And the intuition is the same. Okay? The intuition here tells us that this function here, g of x, if you give a value of x, it tells you the distance from that point x to the point 7. Okay, that's fine. So this is distance from x to 7. And of course it's always positive. Okay, right. How does this help us? And indeed, why does this help us in any graphical way? Well, we've got now an intuition as to what these two things mean. Now let's draw a number line. Real numbers. There's 0, there's 2, and there's 7. What do we want to find here? We want to find those values of x for which this value is less than that value. What does that mean? Actually, that means we want to find the values of x which are the distance from 2 is less than the distance from 7. Okay, so let's think about that. So let's take a particular x value. Let's say x equals 3. Okay? For x equals 3, how far away is that from 2? Well, it's one unit from 2. One. How far away is it from 7? Well, it's four units from 7. Okay? So the value x equals 3 is indeed closer to 2 than it is to 7, which says that the distance from 2 is less than the distance to 7. Therefore, x equals 3 
is a solution to this equation. Okay, we can just plug it in and do it algebraically. So 3 minus 2, which is uh, absolute value of 1, sorry, the absolute value of 3 minus 2, absolute value of 1, is indeed less than the absolute value of 3 minus 7, which is absolute value minus 4, which is 4. Okay? So it's true that 1 is less than 4. Okay? So let's remove these particular numbers, that one I just chose x equals 3, and let's see if we can get a general idea about which numbers are going to be closer to 2 than to 7. Okay. Now clearly any number to the left of 2, let's say any number over here, is closer to 2 than it is to 7, because you've got to get to 2 and then you've got to get to 7. Okay. So all numbers, certainly x less than 2, x less than or equal to 2, all satisfy the inequality. How about numbers greater than 7? Okay. If I have a number over here, let's say x equals 9, that's definitely closer to 7 than it is to 2. Okay. So all numbers x... So we found this number, 9 over 2, which lies in between 2 and 7, and we want to ask the question, which, of the, which direction from here is are the, the set of numbers that satisfy this equation, and we see that it's all of the numbers to the left of this. So the solution to this is all numbers, at least elements of the reals, which are less than 9 over 2, satisfy the inequality, I should say, not the equation. There's a number of ways of writing this, so let's write it using set builder notation, x in R such that x is less than 9 over 2. Okay? We could also write it as minus infinity to 9 over 2, and we use the, the circular brackets because it doesn't include the number 9 over 2. If we put in 9 over 2, it's not true that 9 over 2 minus 2 is less than 9 over, 9 over 2 minus 7. They're the same thing. Okay. So this is the graphical way to think about it. In the next video, I'll talk about the other two ways. Okay, very good. See you soon.